So that was a quick little overview of the actual light that's lighting the 10 gallon nano. So let's go ahead and do a quick little time lapse of what I did as far as putting the lights together. It's basically uh, me drilling some holes and um, arranging some some of the LED pucks and the lenses for the LEDs to make sure that they light up good. And then me put that together back and forth for a few of the different sawed and stuff. So let's get into that and then we'll come back and then give you guys my actual overview of uh, me using it so far. Alright guys, so welcome back to part 2 of the DIY build, part 5. If you guys did not catch last week's video, I put a little card right here and I'll also a link in the description so you guys could go check that video out. In this video, it's mainly going to be me sitting at my computer listening to some music whilst I test out the lights. And in this clip right here, you can see me testing out the different um, wireless controllability, controllability of the light, even though I did remove that on the new version of the light. So this DIY light that I did, I wanted to redo the entire build like I said last week and it was because I find that the first um, instance of this light was a little bit too bulky and sits a little bit too large on top of my canopy so I wanted something a little bit more sleek so I decided to you know take inspiration from the Ecotech Radeon lights and I just happened to find a box that or a um, old router box that just fitted just properly so and it was about the same size so that pretty much worked out but in doing so getting a smaller box one of the things i did have a problem with is finding how i'm gonna cool the leds because they do get um pretty hot i'm um, up to i think about 100 degrees when i was measuring it and a little bit above that so heat kills leds um so i was thinking of ways i could differently cool it and uh, what i came up with was taking a some aluminum um panel and uh, at least aluminum plate and then cutting it to size and then using some thermal adhesive uh, tape at the back of each led array taping that to the led um the aluminum panel once i was done with that then i wanted to use a internal um internal laptop fan um that way i could have an entire internal system but as you guys would see in last week's video and as the progression of this video um the i blew that um light so i went ahead not the light i blew the fan so i went ahead and just used a larger computer fan so the aluminum sheet that i use is basically the same material that i used to build the entire housing just some thin sheet of um, aluminum and uh what i did i just cut it to size it kind of reminds me of the black box leds where um they have as brs would say a license plate cut out for the cooling panel but i think it works just fine and another thing i did to it was i added some heat sinks from the old build i ordered the little 10 millimeter by 10 millimeter heat sinks and i just stuck those to the back of that so that increases the surface area um so once the fan is cool it does extra bit of fins that I can cool so in this clip you guys could see me drilling some holes in the aluminum panel and that's basically some holes that line up with the LED arrays so that way I could um, fit the wires that mount to the LED arrays and make sure I get as close of a contact that way the cooling from the LED array is transferred onto the aluminum panel in this clip you guys can see how I mount the LED light arrays to the aluminum panel and it's basically me using some thermal adhesive tape and that is basically tape that you use to transfer heat or transfer cool temperatures from one, um, one surface to the next as long as those two surfaces are able to conduct um, it conduct um, temperature for example aluminum and um, zinc or something or copper so it works just like if you know how thermal adhesive paste you use for like um, if you're building a computer and you put it on your CPU or something like that um, but it's less messy and it's easier cleanup um, there is also thermal adhesive 
paste but that one is a little bit more permanent so if you make a mistake and let's see set aside and that adhesive um, glues it's more like an epoxy and it's really difficult to remove you can remove it but you may end up damaging one of your um, surfaces so one of the challenges that I did encounter whilst building this slide is basically the placement because I also did change a few of the LEDs that's on the um, PAR38. I wanted to make sure that they're a little bit more bluer because I like that bluer light. Um, I don't like that harsh, harsh white light. So um, once I mounted them back onto the LED array, they were a little bit off and coming directly from the factory they're dead center where they should be so they align with the lenses 100 percent and uh, one of the things i keep doing is once i put the panel i stuck the panel to the the led arrays every time i would was to take it off and try to put it back on the lenses never aligned properly with the, the led so i had to um, go back and forth and put it in different ways just to shuffle it make sure that they fit to make sure I have proper light print penetration so as you guys can see in this clip I just did a little bit of test fitting and it fits almost perfectly but a little bit snug with the um, little fan that was there that little laptop fan and it actually worked just fine up until I plugged the wrong thing into the wrong thing So in this clip, I'm basically tinning my wires or the tips of the um, wires that I'm going to be using. It's basically putting some solder and some um, solder flux on the edge of the wire so you get a proper solder joint. Because if you don't use it, the solder doesn't really stick to the copper as well. And when you try to solder two wires together, it never really does a proper joint. The solder joint is um, weak and too much movement could actually break it. But once you put the flux on there, it's almost like when you use a PVC um, primer. It basically cleans the, um, the copper out. Uh, or whichever if it's silver wire or copper wire it basically cleans the wire enough that there's a proper ad area for the solder to adhere properly to the surface and it's a little i think it's a little bit corrosive as well so it does etch into the copper wire a little bit and what that basically does it it's kind of like sanding a surface before you paint um where the sand is it evens out the surface and it leaves little grooves in the surface that the glue can actually grab onto so this is basically simple overview of how i put the lights together nothing too crazy just some um, solder and some stuff i did actually remove one part uh, the wireless capability of this light um, I just left it for now um, straight in from the power supply into each LED I am gonna get uh, some wireless controllers later on but I need some really small ones and I need to find one that is 36 volts compatible because the part 38 in this um, light is a little bit too high for most of the um most of the led controllers on the market because they go from 12 to 24 or 0 to 24 and the part 38 is 36 watts or would it be 38 basically 38 watts but it's it's more like 36.79 or something like that anyways um so that pretty much shows that if you guys want to see a more detailed um, overview of how i did the entire light build um, from start to finish and showing you how I changed the LED grow lights into something usable for a reef tank and how I did the wiring and how I wired the wireless controllers then you guys could click on um, the description in the link in the description below I have links to video 1, 2, 3 and part 4 and um, I'll link a card Alright guys, so after um, using this light for it's just about two months now or a month and a half of using the light, it looks like it's doing its job perfectly. All the corals are extended um, besides that one multipore that did bleach because it's basically an uh, inch or so away from the light and I didn't have a diffuser. That's the only coral that looked like it did bad but it is coming back. 
Um, so I wish I did have the control ability, so I gotta figure out a way of controlling that um, that power 38. And once I get that, I will put a video out. So it's mainly just me probably having to put a MOSFET and reducing, doing a step down voltage to one of those step down controllers that controls the LEDs and then reroute it back to the um, power 38. So if you have any ideas, you could always comment down below how I could control that um, power 38. Also, the um, two blue LEDs, um, those can be easily controlled. I just have to get another controller. I just haven't been doing it. I thought, eh, it's doing all right. So um, the crawl seemed to like it. So I don't need to do anything as far as like um, changing any, messing with the um, light spectrum. So I could just leave it as is. Uh, all the crawls besides that one are doing just fine. Pops I was extended. Um, I do feed the tank a little bit um, of. Um, polyplabs, uh, rephroids, just a little pinch um, every few days or so, call seems to like it. Um, I probably shouldn't need to feed every two days, probably like once a week, but I do have a few feather dusters in here that are really enjoying it. Um, I do have a light dusting of the, um, the algae that comes in, that little brown algae, so phosphates might be a little bit high, and I am planning on adding a a um, chill reactor to this. I just have to do a proper design to it. And so, one thing that's filtering this 10 gallon nano is the rock and the um, filter system, the cancer filter with some rock in there that I added last week. Alright, guys, so for the most part, that does it for this video. If you guys like it, go ahead and hit the like button down below and also remember to subscribe. Go ahead and comment down below and let me know what you guys think of, the, of this DIY light. And um, if you want to see any more DIY videos, I am planning on doing a few. Um, there is the Voss bottle uh, protein skimmer that I have, it's already done. I'm just um, trying to figure out how I'm gonna arrange it so it is level and, um, and I have a few other little DIY um, videos I have to put out so but for the most part that does it for this video guys I'll catch you guys in the next one